Hey guys, as you can see, I'm in a brand new space, brand new room, lots of space to move about. And as we can also see, we have a map. This is so professional. Seeing this on my camera looks so professional. I could do the weather like this. See? I'll tell you that it is hot all over. And that is all you ever really need to know about Australia. As most of you know, I have just come out of the outback. I was there for five months. Three of those months were doing my 88 days farm work, which will make me eligible for my second year visa. And my second year visa has been granted. Hooray! Dance! And I'm getting so many questions, and I just thought I'd just do a massive video and answer them all for you. How do I find my farm work? You could go onto Gumtree and put an ad up, just like I did. And the link is in the down bar below, which will have a link to my website and it will give you exactly what I put on my ad. And to be honest, it's a really good way of doing it. A lot of backpackers find really good places. Or you could go to cities like Bundaberg. This kind of place is just overrun with backpackers, but it's great for fruit picking, etc. And lots of hostels there will line you up with jobs. Don't ask me about the pay and don't ask me about fruit picking because I've never done it myself. So online and going into working hostels is probably your best chance of finding your farm work. How much do they pay? This will vary. You can do something called woofing, which is actually volunteering, and they will pay you bed and board, and that is it. And you work X amount of hours, and they will sign you off like anywhere else. I can tell you now that on the place I was on, which was a sheep station in Western Queensland, they paid me $400 a week. So it's all about what you want. If you're happy to do volunteering, then you will have absolutely no problem in finding work. However, most people during their farm work like to earn a few thousand dollars so they can carry on a traveling and that's what I wanted. So don't settle for somewhere if they're gonna pay you a really crappy wage. Hold out and find somewhere good. How many hours will I work? Right, this again depends on what you do and where you go. I know people who have worked 12 hour days. I have done days where I worked for three hours and they still pay me the same. I got paid $80 a day. It all depends on what you do. Fruit picking, normally it's a very long day. You will get up early and start early and finish really late at night. Also, if you're gonna go and work on cattle and sheep stations, like I did, again, you can be up at the crack of dawn. Do weekends count towards my 88 days? If you work full time, then yes, weekends and bank holidays will count in your 88 days. So you're not just counting five day weeks, you're counting seven. However, if you work casually or part time, Weekends generally don't count, so you have to do the full 88 days. When can I do my farm work? You can do it whenever you like. You can land in Australia and a week later, just get your farm work out of the way with. I know plenty of people who have done that, and that means you can just go off into Australia then for your next 18 or so months and just enjoy yourself and not have to think about that farm work. Or you can do it last minute. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that will matter is if you want to do your fruit picking, then obviously they'll have seasons. But you can go online, I'll put a link down in the description box on where you can see what fruit is in season at different times of the year. What kind of work counts? Now this is the big one and you will get scammed with this. When people will tell you that bar work in an outback pub counts, it does not. I worked in an outback bar for two months before I did my farm work. It doesn't count, it's not rural work. So these are the jobs which will count. And this is all on the IMI website and again, link down below for you to have a look at. It has to match one of these jobs, it has to. It cannot be general gardening or housework or bar work. It has to be within a specified postcode area, for one. And secondly, the work must be specific. Another big one again is who is eligible. Now, again, on the same website, it will have a list of countries of those who are eligible for a second year. Not all those that are eligible for the first year are eligible for the second. For example, people from America and South America. You're not eligible for a second year visa. Don't ask me why, it does my head in, it drives me crazy, I don't get it, but that's the way it is. So again, link down below, go and check out to see if your country is eligible for this second year. Do I have to do it all at the same place? No, of course you don't. You don't have to complete your entire 88 days on one farm. What you can do is you can break it up as much as you want. You can do one month here and then two months there. It doesn't really matter, as long as you do collect 88 days from eligible places, 
you can do it as many places as you want. Do they need to sign anything? Yes, there is a form. Again, just look at how helpful I am. Link down below to the form. When you leave a place, print it out, get them to fill in their ABN number, which is an Australian business number, and sign it with the date you were there from, and two, how many days you did, and then sign it. Not always gonna be needed, but it's good to have that paper copy in case immigration get back to you and want to see hard proof. Then we're going to go on to proof. Do you need proof you've been there? Generally, when you go and apply to the link down below, you'll just fill in your details, fill in your dates and the ABN number. That is really simple, that's all you have to do. Majority of people can do it online. The only thing you'll need proof for is that you've been there. So if immigration call you and say, we need more proof to support your application, make sure you have that signed form I was just talking about. And also make sure if you've got a bus out there, then you have the ticket for that still. Or a bank statement which will show that that farmer or employer has paid you for the past three months. So that kind of covered how you need to apply. So now you know how to apply. You go online, you fill out your details, it literally takes 10 minutes and you pay your money. Then you will get an email through. Mine actually come in in about six hours. Normally your second year takes longer than your first year, but mine actually seem to be quicker. But it differs for every single person. If they want to investigate your visa application, it could take up to a few weeks. Then there is absolutely nothing else you need to do. As soon as you get that confirmation through, it's already on your system. Oh, not on your system, of course it's not on your system, it's on their system. Get it together, Nelly. It will be on their system that you've applied and you'll have a brand new leaving date. Sorted. Do you have to leave Australia to get your second year visa? No. I'm currently in Australia. My first visa would run out on the 19th of August. The only stipulation they have is if you apply for your second year whilst you're in Australia, then you have to be in Australia when they grant your second year. And vice versa, if you're outside the country, you have to be outside when it's granted. But that's it, you don't need to leave, you can just carry on your time. So going back a bit from applying for your second year visa, so sorry, back to farm work, what do you need to bring? One thing you need to do is to change your SIM card to Telstra. Now I kind of recommend that any backpacker goes immediately onto Telstra because that's the only network service you will get in outback rural areas in Australia. You will not get Vodafone, you will not get Optus, you have to have Telstra. So make sure before you go out, the amount of backpackers I know who didn't, get yourself a Telstra SIM. What you also need is a good pair of boots. If you're going to go work on a sheep or cattle station or even fruit picking, they will tell you to get a good pair of boots. Mine were Redbacks and cost me just over a hundred dollars. Yeah, I weeped at that. My poor backpacker bank balance was at about three hundred dollars at the time and I almost cried at the lady, the poor thing in that shop. I was like, not a hundred, don't say a hundred, I don't have a hundred. But seriously, I got them still and they will last you years if you get a good pair of leather work boots. Comfortable, secure, good, because the terrain out there is ridiculous. I mean, totally, horrendously ridiculous to walk on. So good boots. You'll also need a hat, sunglasses, sun cream, bug repellents, and also you're gonna need decent clothes, a long sleeve shirt for very hot days because you're gonna be out in the sun a lot. So a water bottle and a long sleeve shirt is really, really important. If you're going to be working around livestock, then long trousers. Something like combat trousers are absolutely fine. I picked mine up for about $5, my combat trousers, and to be fair, they're disintegrated by the end of the three months, but you need to wear long trousers when you're mustering or drafting or drenching or any work with livestock. So things to cover yourself up with are very good. Do I need any experience? No. This is something I will stress. Do not lie to your employee, employer, employer, employer about what you can do in this situation. Don't do it. If you can't ride a horse, do not say you can ride a horse. If you've never worked on a ranch or station, do not tell them that. I got my with no experience. Most backpackers do because you're either going to be fruit picking so they'll train you on the job or you're going to be a station hand and it's all pretty simple and they'll train you on the job. So there's no need to lie. Plenty of places are looking for backpackers. As long as they can see that you are hardworking and willing to get your hands dirty, you really shouldn't have a problem. How on earth do I get into the outback? If you're going to be doing your farm work in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Northern Territory, South Australia, Greyhound buses cover a lot of the country. 
However, if you're going to be in Western Australia, there are other bus options and train options. However, because it's so remote over there, if you're going to go work on a station, they're going to want you to have your own car. But generally, if you're sticking to the East Coast, you should be fine with Greyhound buses. That's another thing. You are putting a lot of trust with someone you spoke to on the telephone and then getting on a 19 hour bus into the middle of nowhere and nothing and they're gonna pick you up. You're gonna have to go on this with a little faith and a lot of common sense. If it sounds bad, if it's or it sounds too good to be true, then ignore it, don't do it. Only do what you're comfortable with. Another tip, if you're going into the outback, make sure you have enough money to leave the outback. If you get there and you don't like it, then leave. But make sure you've got a few hundred dollars to get a flame, uh, to get a flame, to get a flame back. Flight, plane, I wanted to say both at the same time. My bad. Get a flight or a bus or a train back. Because a lot of people do go to a place and really don't like it. I just happened to be blessed that on my station they were amazing and I actually didn't want to leave. So, talking of work on stations, let's say what you can expect, the kind of jobs you're going to be doing. On a station, generally, you're going to be like a jackaroo, jillaroo, station hand, and there's a lot that comes into that. For example, you're going to be working with livestock. If your station breeds sheep, then hell, that's a different thing that I've ever done. They stopped breeding on my station years ago. We did shearing, and we did two shears whilst I was there. So there's a lot of work learning to draft, muster, drench, everything. And it's so cool and I got to shear a sheep. Exciting times. Also, there's so much other work because once shearing is over, of course there's nothing to do with the sheep then except keep them watered and keep them alive. So you're gonna be doing things like fencing. Such a fun job, by the way. I totally recommend you do it full time. <laughs> Couldn't get enough of fencing. So much fun. You're gonna go around and maintain the water lines and maintain the tanks and turn the generators on to pump the water from the bore or from the tank into the, into the, my oh God, it's been a long day. Into the things that sheep drink from. That thing. The trough, the trough. That's what sheep drink from. Oh, I only left there two weeks ago and all my knowledge is fading. Another thing that I will say is a lot of people are asking what you get when you get there. Do you live in the house with them? Do you get food? And yeah, I was getting paid $80 a day, which isn't a lot for the kind of work I was doing, but it was a lot in when you think that I got bed and board. I got all my meals, I lived in the house with my own room, my own bathroom, in a little section. And when you're out there, you can't spend your money, which is the greatest thing in the world. So yeah, I really hope that helped you all out. If there are any more questions, please feel free to drop them in a comment below and I'll try and do my best to answer them. But that's the simplicity of it. The IMI website will tell you everything, absolutely everything. So just go on to there, it's wealth of information. It'll tell you what jobs qualify you for a second year visa and what postcode you need to be living in. Yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe below, get regular updates on my travels and some strange and wonderful advice just like this. Also, there is Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all at Psycho Traveller, but of course the links are in the down bar below. And I will see you next week where I'm going to be telling you all about my experience in the outback. Love you! I mean, look at you. Of course this 75-year-old man wants you to be a naked housemaid.